Hi everyone, very good evening guys. Welcome to day 2 of the pathology images for the upcoming INI CET May 7th. I hope you guys have benefited from the previous two days of micro and pathology images. Yesterday we had a good power packed hematology special. So today in pathology I have got you some mixed bag of systemic path questions, a little bit of general also. And I am primarily going to target on things which are more essential or more important for the INI CET exam. So I have picked up some topics which are expected, some which are repeats and we are going to quickly scan through them in as short a time as possible and we will try to make it very concise. so that we don't consume too much of your time. Although I did give you a, you know, a glimpse of this yesterday also and I told you what exactly is to be done but I got a, I still got a lot of queries from students so I thought that I'll mention it once again that these are the things that you must study before going for the INI CET exam. If you have one one day each for path and micro, please go through the rapid revision that is there on the prep ladder app. If you don't have that much of time as per your timetable and you want to finish it off very quickly in half half a day, then these are the things in the order of importance that you have to do. You have to have to go through the neat PG marathon sessions that we have and you have to go through the sessions that we've conducted right now. That is this today and yesterday's session. Same for micro, the neat PG marathon and the image based session that we conducted day before yesterday yesterday. So this is like on priority list that itna to you will have to study and go before the INICT. This is bare minimum and I hope this is also the most important and that can help you crack the exam as well. If time permits after that go through the one liners again that's in the order of priority that I've put it. So I hope now you don't have any confusion. What are the videos that I have to binge watch? Whenever you get time, you know you have to go through these videos. They're all available on the YouTube channel, right? Okay, so yes, thank you for joining in. Let us begin without any delay. We'll start with question one. I've given you an image-based question. This is a technique which has been shown. Whichever technique you feel of pap smear this is, please tell me what is the adequacy that you will consider for this technique. Whatever this technique is, what is the adequacy criteria and that is a very important previous year question that you had. Very good. Many of you have already started answering and the correct answer is this happens to be what? It is a liquid. No, some of you are not on right track. Guys, this is a liquid based cytology. This is not a conventional pap smear. So, liquid based cytology, the answer is, uh, many of you are answering D. No guys, for liquid based cytology, the answer is 5000. So, listen to me. How will you identify this as if it would have been a conventional Ides spatula wala technique, then you would have answered 8000, I would have agreed. But this is an LBC. So first learn to differentiate. How do I get to know that the examiner has given me a conventional PAP or examiner has given me LBC? If you will see this kind of an Ides spatula put up in front of you, this means it is conventional PAP. And if you see this brush and a container put up in front of you, a brush and a container, that is liquid based cytology. So this I think everyone identifies it's such a famous spotter of your gynecology images, Ides spatula. So if Ides spatula is there, that would have been conventional pap. Now, once you have done this, now you should be knowing what is their adequacy criteria. So, if you've got that eye spatula wala technique and you've got the conventional path, then what are the squamous epithelial cells? Then your answer was right. Then all of you are saying 8,000. I agree. 8,000 to 12,000 cells per 10 high power field. So, 8K to 12K. But if you're talking about LBC, the adequacy criteria is 5,000 cells per 10 high power field. So, remember to distinguish between these to and then give your answer. The difference is only in the squamous epithelial cells. It is not in the endocervical cells. Endocervical cell criteria for both the techniques is 10, 10 each. You should see 10 endocervical cells for adequacy of conventional, 10 endocervical for the adequacy of LBC. So coming back, if I ask you a question, what is this technique? This is an LBC. So what do you think is the adequacy of squamous epithelial cells? 5000 cells. But what if this technique was not given? Okay. What is not given? If instead of this SR slide de diya, then ma'am, how will I identify whether examiner wants to talk about conventional or wants to talk about LBC? So look at this. See, what did you use in conventional? Again, telling you, you use the iron spatula. Spatula is like a brush. You will just paint the slide. Bilkul whatever sample you will get, you will paint it on the slide. So the slide is going to look very, very dirty and messy. 
if you get this kind of a dirty messy slide you are dealing with a conventional path whereas if you get a nice little round circle clean looking slide then that is going to be liquid based cytology this could be another image based question look at the slide and tell me the technique so if you get a nice round round wala clean looking slide liquid based cytology again asking you are integrating this basically with gynecology how many types of lbc do we have we have two types one is known as sure path one is known as thin prep ma'am how do you look at a slide and say that this is sure path and this is thin prep you will have to look at the diameter of the circle so remember s for s sure path is going to have a smaller circle 13 mm ka circle and thin prep will have a 20 mm you can see the circle is much much bigger so simple the chota wala circle the smaller circle is sure path lbc the bigger circle is thin prep lbc very very good now you can even identify on the basis of the on the slide whether i'm dealing with lbc or conventional i hope everyone has got this adequacy pe questions are too many but who decided this adequacy quickly tell me what is the uh, you know what is the organization that categorizes this bethesda system Bethesda system of reporting has given me the adequacy of a pap smear has Bethesda system also given me the adequacy of something else anything else apart from this i'll ask you that question has bethesda also given me the adequacy of a thyroid fnse i'm asking you these two adequacy questions were in that lockdown phase whatever ini cet questions exams happened they were in they were obsessed with these adequacy questions so one adequacy was the pap smear the other adequacy was thyroid fnse so thyroid fnse ka kya adequacy hai so they say how many groups you should be seeing you should be seeing at least six groups of cells should be count i've got a slide for you you will tell me adequate hai ya nahi hai six groups so 1 2 3 4 5 6 much above six ma'am groups are adequate theek every group should have 10 cells 10 cells per cluster or per group i don't even need to count of course there are more than 10 cells so 6 10 6 10 6, 10 groups and 10 cells in every group if that is the criteria met you will say it is adequate 6 10 is for what you remember for thyroid so adequacies of all that you had to know in pathology are done for you i'm done with adequacy but i'm going to come back to pap smear once again because my next question is once again based on the pap smears only so can you first tell me what is this i've got you some kind of a clinical condition and i've got you four image based questions you need to match the following and tell me the right combination that you feel whatever clinical and whatever photo is going typical ini kind of a question complicate it unnecessarily make it lengthy make simple things lengthy what is that going to be i'm sure all of you know the answers simple hai batao what is it going to be okay i'm saying many of you are getting okay i've got a mix of d b a as answers so why don't we study this once and then maybe i can come back and uh, you know match it once again with you most of you are going in for b theek hai let us try let us try there is a discrepancy koi baat nahi let me start one by one so first and foremost if the examiner tells you a green color discharge tell me from gynee what does it mean green color discharge basically means that we are talking about trichomonas i hope you remember trichomonas was strawberry so if you remember strawberry this is how a strawberry looks like na to strawberry matlab firstly the cervix is going to look like a strawberry point number 1 that is trichomonas and strawberry has something green the green leaf on top of it so the discharge is going to be green in color that is classical trico up the point is how do i identify trico the slide in the exam on which you will not be able to see anything is trichomonas why because it's a very tiny pear shape organism imagine you had to pick this tiny little pear shape organism over here damn difficult to pick up because you don't have an option of zooming in in the paper na so when you can't identify anything that is trichomonas so now when i come back in all of them i'm seeing something or the other abnormal but in this slide i could not see anything abnormal sab normal normal cells the ma'am so this tiny little pear must have been the trichomonas so this is definitely fitting in with the first option so remember greenish discharge is going to be trichomonas right acha what else if you say that i could not ma'am i to did it didn't strike me only trichomonas mujhe samajh hi nahi aaya then i'll say you will be given this kind of a picture and what is this picture 
can can I also see a trichomonas in it? Very, very difficult. But I'm a pathologist, I can see it. Otherwise, no one can see it. But then what everyone can see are these lumba lumba long threads. You can see those. Because trichomonas says that I tend to come with leptothrix. Leptothrix is my best friend. So leptothrix and trichomonas. So the rule is that if you start seeing these lumbar long long leptothrix then that is an indication that somewhere a trichomonas is hiding. Search for it and this is the pear shape trichomonas. Very good Dr. Satvik. That is what I was waiting for. Leptothrix is long long like spaghetti pasta. Trichomonas is round round like meatball. So this is known as the spaghetti and meatball appearance. Very very good. Perfect. So, this is the entire story of trichomonas which is done in one flashcard. Remember a strawberry, strawberry cervix and green on top. So, greenish discharge. Coming to the next one which is everyone's favorite. As soon as K, K, K. What is K, K, K going to be? As soon as I see K for curdy white discharge, I start thinking of kebab and I start thinking of candida. Curdy, kebab, candida. So, what is the shish kebab effect? Like pieces of kebab. All the cells are arranged like pieces of kebab. So, it's very sad that we all always tend to ruin such a favorite dish of everyone but I'm sorry I've ruined spaghetti meatball I've ruined strawberries now I'm ruining the shish kebabs also for you so that is what you see with candida curdy kebab candida this is also done let's move on to the next what do you see with bacterial vaginosis firstly what is bacterial vaginosis gardnerella vaginalis Gardnerella vaginalis and guys quickly tell me from gynecology what are the two criteria that you follow. One is the famous Amcells criteria for bacterial vaginosis and the other one there is another one na, Nugent criteria. Nugent's criteria and Amcells criteria is what you follow. So kya dikta hai? Gardnerella vaginalis it's a bacteria, bacterial vaginosis and what are these two cells that I am seeing? Firstly, look at this cell, ma'am, on top of this cell, for example, if this is the cell, on top of this, there are dot, 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 all the cocobacilli, all the bacteria are sticking, all the bacteria are sticking on top of it, that is why it's looking so hazy, it's not looking clean, that is giving me a clue, it's a clue cell. So, will the bacteria only sit on the cell? Of course not, bacteria is a background, mein bhi hoga. it's going to be present in the background also. So, look at the background in this picture, is it looking like pearly white, pure white, Nahi na? the background is looking a little again shaded hazy not very clean why because there's a lot of bacteria fill me background so what are the two things that you see fill me background and clue cells that will tell you bacterial vaginosis amcells and nugents criteria coming to the last one answer is in front of you tell me the history that you'll get for a history of actinomyces you will always have iucd usage intrauterine contraceptive device that will tell you about actinomyces and it's making justice to its name it's got fibers it's got these fibers right so it's got these hair coming out that is why they call it cotton ball woolly ball they say it, you know it looks like a piece of dust so dust bunnies any name that i'm missing out ma'am it's also looking like rays of the sun coming out yes it is also known as the sun ray appearance still i'm missing out one more name Koi scientist ka naam. very very good we've got it gupta bodies so imagine every year they give me a new answer they give me a new term for actinomyces but it's the same if you see filaments coming out it is definitely a case of actinomyces and this history will be given now let me go back to my question tell me where would you fit the greenish discharge trichomonas so that is going to be option number b okay amcells criteria gardnerella vaginalis bacterial vaginosis find the clue cell which one of these is the clue cell this is definitely the clue cell this hazy hazy cell over here so the second one is matched with a. I think I've got my answer. Coming to the third one, what is this curdy white discharge? Curdy white KKK, kebab, candida. Where is the shish kebab? This is the shish kebab. So, curdy white goes with D. And IUCD, intrauterine contraceptive device, actinomyces. This is the beautiful actinomyces that you have over here. So, 4 goes with C. So, all of you who answered A were definitely on track. And I hope you understood this question also. TK sorted with everyone, but all infections are done. The main purpose of doing uh, pap smear is what? It's not to find out infections. Pap smear is a screening modality for what? Catching cancer. So tell me two things. How does cancer look like and which is the virus that causes cancer? So how does cancer look like? That I will show you. Cancer looks like this. What is the diagnosis of this pap smear? Squamous cell carcinoma. How did I say that? Because I will see something known as tadpole cells. 
yes tadpole cells how is tadpole tadpole matlab it will have a big head and it will have a thin tail that is a tadpole big head and a thin tail so if i zoom in i can definitely see that over here i'm having a big head like this and a tiny tail coming out so i can see a tadpole i can see another one i have a big head and a tiny tail coming out and they are very very pink ma'am why are these cells so orange orange itna orange is hue kyu hai because squamous keratin these are having squamous epithelium produces keratin so keratin will look very very orange pink on a on a pap smear so tadpole cell is your hint of previous year questions tadpole cells are seen in squamous cell carcinoma meanwhile all of you were right keratin pearls dr hemant keratin pearls are seen on a biopsy on a biopsy of course you will see it but this is a pap smear instead of seeing those pink pink keratin pearls you are seeing these pink pink tadpole cells okay but yeah meanwhile everyone told me the right virus the virus that you are seeing it for ma'am is human papilloma virus and in case you are talking about cancer we are mostly talking about human papilloma 16 and 18 and what is the cell that you are going to see you are going to see the coelocyte i have got you both i have got you a pap smear of a coelocyte i have got you a biopsy of a coelocyte you know they love this cell so you need to know it inside out what is the nucleus that it's going to have so for example if this is a cell that i'm talking about the nucleus will be very very dark very good raisinoid like a kishmish like a raisinoid it's going to be very very dark and around that area have you seen i've kept a whitish area i've not colored it perinuclear halo so if these two words are written raisinoid nucleus with perinuclear halo that is a coelocyte so look at this very very dark nucleus over here and the area around it is a little white similarly you can see very dark nucleus here and area is white dark nucleus area is white these are all said to be a coelocyte yes you know the hat trick question that has come hpv ka vaccine prepare karna hai you have to prepare the vaccine which part of human papilloma virus is used to prepare the vaccine this question has come two times in inict back to back maybe hat trick ab ho jayega and that is l1 capsid very good you guys already know this another question which earlier did a hat trick and used to come back to back was for causing cancers for causing cancers can you tell me which are the proteins of hpv which cause cancers e6 and e7 right e6 and e7 are the cancer causing ones this is your general path question so how does it cause cancer can you help me with that how does e6 and e7 cause cancers e6 is going to switch off p53 E7 is going to switch off retinoblastoma gene. Super, all of you already know it, and you know the mnemonic also, na? That we did. How will I learn? E6 is for P53 switching off. E7 is for RB gene. So go back to your basics of who is senior and who is junior. I know P53 is a policeman. Every single student knows this point. But who is RB gene? RB gene is governor. A governor is obviously more senior than a policeman. So senior is governor. So I will give him a bigger number. E7 senior number. Policeman is junior. So I will give him a junior number. Okay. So E6 for P53 and E7 for RB gene. All previous year questions sorted for us. Okay. So this is done. Can I move on to the next question? Another gynae path correlation that I want to do because. again it's expected so here you have a 29 year old female who's come with an ovarian cyst on ultrasound examination and that is surgically removed the cyst on cut is uniloculated and shows the presence of clear watery fluid what is your diagnosis mean by uh dr rishav yes p21 nowadays is being said uh, but uh, again if you get a best answer p53 is definitely going to be it Okay. Meanwhile, I've got an answer to all of that. Serous cyst adenoma. So the primary concern always in these cyst wala tumors of the ovary is serous hai ya mucinous hai. And why is this a theory question when we were going to discuss image based questions? Because now I'm going to show you the images of both of these. Answer is sorted. Option A. But look at these two. See guys, when they are talking about serous versus mucinous, follow S S S. M M M. It's very easy. S S S M M M. What is S S S? When you're talking about serous ovarian cyst, how many cysts will you have? You will have S single cyst. Hoga, ma'am. Look at this. It is a single cyst. And what epithelium? Can you see these tiny tiny hair coming out? Matlab cilia. I am gonna see something again with S. That is ciliated epithelium. So this is something like the schistosoma that we were doing day before yesterday. Schistosoma was also obsessed with S. Serous cyst is also obsessed with S. Serous hair, single hair. ciliated hai and does it show you some bodies 
do you remember some psm square mnemonic which bodies have i made onion skin wala bodies with s sound this tends to show you the samoma bodies right serous ovarian tumors another s coming up your way samoma bodies s s s s now coming to m m m m what is m m m m means mucinous ovarian is going to be m multi loculated multiple can you see multiple locules yes and which epithelium empty empty looking epithelium why is it empty looking because it has mucin so mucinous epithelium and that is done meanwhile dr arun is right which of them now put your common sense into it which of them will cause pseudo myxoma peritoneum myxoma mucin how will the mucin go into the peritoneum pseudo myxoma peritoneum will obviously happen with mucinous ovarian cyst na and provided it's a cancer not with mucinous cyst adenoma oma is benign that will not cause pseudo myxoma peritoneum mucinous cyst adeno carcinoma will cause pseudo myxoma peritoneum theek hai both of these were falling under which category surface epithelial tumor so tell me the tumor marker also na tumor marker of any surface epithelial tumor that we have is going to be ca 125 very correctly mentioned by dr satvik already so do you want to do although there was only one question but do you want to like quickly let's again yesterday we were doing time boxing do you guys want to do time boxing and finish all the bodies and all those things that we have for ovarian tumors jaldi jaldi the most important important ones that we are expecting to baki bhi jaldi se 5 minutes mein let's have a look at it okay so have a look at the next one now we now i've done sss i've done mmm let me do bbb what is bbb when i'm talking about a brenner tumor i am going to have which epithelium bladder epithelium bladder may what epithelium is there transitional epithelium right so i'm going to have a transitional epithelium and what am i going to have coffee bean nucleus so how will i look at the coffee bean nucleus coffee bean means there has to be a line going through the nucleus yes i can see some lines which are going through and through the nuclei that is going to make it coffee bean appearance so brenner bladder and coffee bean this is also surface epithelium so this is also going to be ca125 tumor marker sath mein likhte jao theek hai let's keep writing the tumor mark anything surface epithelium write ca125 coming to the next one i'll make a line over here because surface epithelial are done the next one is as soon as in the ovary or even in the testis if you see all cells are looking white 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 matlab look at this they are showing you lots of white white spaces hai na that means it is a disgerminoma in the ovary and if it would have been the testis then you would have called it a seminoma and that white white appearance is referred to as the pride egg appearance what are the tumor markers very good everyone has started writing ldh and flap okay others can also be there sometimes beta hcg bhi ho sakta hai but what is never gonna be there tell me that tumor marker tell me that um, tumor marker yes so meanwhile everyone you are right even of 3 4 i agree nanog of 3 4 sab theek hai but tell me the one which is not gonna be there meanwhile yes afp nahi hoga never afp is what you actually have to learn for the exam very good beta hcg can sometimes be there 30% cases can show you beta hcg okay but beta hcg is actually yahan to miscellaneous hai actually beta hcg is a marker of what beta hcg is actually a marker of choriocarcinoma if i would have had to select the best answer how do i identify choriocarcinoma in the paper i see an ovary with lots and lots of hemorrhage and necrosis hemorrhage is what all the red red area is of course hemorrhage and all this yellowish area is going to be necrosis lots of hemorrhage lots of necrosis what is coming to my mind tell me something if i only give you forget cancers don't be biased agar sirf itna photo hota lots of hemorrhage lots of necrosis the tumor you would have thought would have been choriocarcinoma but any non tumorous condition think if the ovary gets undergoes torsion ovarian torsion will also result in a lot of this hemorrhage and necrosis only right so you need to look at your options accordingly correct uh, chocolate cyst can show you hemorrhage but why will chocolate cyst so you show you cell death necrosis is not something i would expect but yeah in terms of blood you are right chocolate cyst ho sakta hai theek hai endometriosis chocolate cyst good maybe lower down in your differentials you can keep anyway this is a case of choriocarcinoma now how will it look microscopically i and i cet ke liye please look at this picture very well and go i'm going to tell you two cells one is a cytotrophoblast and other is going to be a syncytiotrophoblast cytotrophoblast and syncytiotrophoblast so this is how a cytotrophoblast will look like one nucleus and this is how a syncytiotrophoblast will look like lots of nuclei so let's start finding why how will i learn it dekho syncytio 
what are we you and i today 210 students we are all a syncytium we are a group we are studying together for the ini cet exam so we become one group one syncytium that is lots of cells together try to search in this picture can you see this lots of cells together lots of cells together lots of cells together these all become what they become the syncytiotrophoblast and what are those individual cells one one cell which is lying single single cytotrophoblast khatam that is what you will see where do you other okay forget all this go back to first year go back to embryology go back to placenta formation what do cytotrophoblast and syncytiotrophoblast normally make they make a villi right they come together and they say that we will get together and we will make the villi of the placenta but what normal tha na cancer mein nothing normal is going to happen so the rule is that there is no villi that is the golden rule of choriocarcinoma it can't be normal it's a cancer it's dangerous normal to nahi banega so no villus formation is going to occur is that okay with everyone so quickly you have done this one last photo is left we i cannot afford to miss out on the famous famous schiller duval much expected body which is the yolk sac tumor schiller duval body or glomeruloid body seen in yolk sac tumor i'm not going to ask you the tumor marker because even a second year student on his first day knows alpha fetoprotein is the tumor marker that you have but how do i identify a schiller duval body always look out for the blood because you're saying glomeruloid body glomerulus has capillaries so glomeruloid body will also have this blood wala thing so if there is blood then tumor then there's a space and again the tumor so what did i say if you have a blood vessel then you have a tumor then you have a space and again a tumor you know how the examiner once gave a question instead of giving you this picture he said there is a body that is seen in the ovary where two rows of tumor cells are separated by a space that is how he wrote it so that is the description of a schiller duval body two rows of tumor cells separated by a space or there is a body which is filled with blood in the center again all these are descriptions of schiller duval or yolk sac tumor right tell me one thing as a miscellaneous thing is there anywhere else that you study glomeruloid body it doesn't look like this but the name is the same wo kaun sa jagah hai where you also read another glomeruloid body a quick answer from all of you so glomeruloid body is going to be seen in two places one is of course the yolk sac tumor not not globoid bodies not globoid glomeruloid bodies and the other one is gb may gb glomeruloid body what is the gb tumor of the brain glioblastoma so that is also going to show you a glomeruloid body so remember gb may gb is how we learn it but they are totally different they are just named similarly someone in between mentioned globoid bodies hey globoid bodies is different where do you see globoid i'll write it like this globoid body is seen where it's a good question that you've put up and it's some kind of a disorder lysosomal kaun sa disorder hai to globoid double b think of a disorder with double b crabbe's disease globoid body is seen with crabbe's disease very very good theek hai so glomeruloid and globoid may don't get confused so coming all the way back the last one i don't even want to show you everyone knows tuft of hair and skin and bone and teeth ma'am that's always going to be a teratoma we know it tell me what is this in a teratoma what is this projection right what is this projection dr blue star will definitely take up all your queries at the end regarding the app anything that you have i'll finish this session and i'll address that okay so next what is this this is known as the rocketansky amazing rocketansky protuberance rocketansky protuberance it's like a hill it's like a mountain like a nipple projection why what is it it's not a show piece what is it it could have cancer i'll say could have cancer plus minus so it's important to identify it cut it look inside it it's a treasure hunt see what is inside it it may have cancer so that is why for a pathologist rocketansky protuberance is like the pandora's box anything can come out of it i have to cut through it i have to look at it chalo coming to this one uh, this is a picture you can all zoom in and see if you want to you have the uterus and the cervix and you have bilateral ovaries honestly if you would have told me earlier i would have thought oh ovaries mein kuch chocolate chocolate hai this is chocolate cyst i would have also thought that ke endometriosis hai but suddenly when i saw the histopath it's not looking like endometriosis it is showing me what it is showing me the thyroid follicles thyroid follicles what are this was this means this was not chocolate cyst this means this was the yes 
this was colloid this brown golden thing must have been colloid this is a case of stroma ovary stroma ovary is what thyroid that is present in the ovary this is also a type of a teratoma konsa teratoma monodermal teratoma very very good what if this thyroid show piece hai ya functional hai is it just sitting here or is it functional of course it's functional it is releasing a lot of t3 t4 it is releasing a lot of t3 t4 and that is what it is functional theek hai it has a possibility very good hyperthyroidism dr siddharth says others are also saying ho sakta hai correct all your story is done one last i would have shown you the same coffee bean appearance but some other tumor can also show you coffee bean in the ovary only so same photo aa sakta hai coffee bean wala but something else can also show you coffee bean appearance so you want to add on to that yes what else can show you coffee bean granulosa cell tumor so i hope you guys know this also we can add in another page when they are asking us about coffee bean in fact let me ask you many other coffee beans also if i say tell me what are the coffee beans in the ovary coffee bean in the ovary you will say granulosa cell tumor and you will say brenner tumor very very good and you remember how did we learn it that coffee hai coffee comes in granular powder coffee comes in granular powder and you have to brew the coffee granular powder brew the coffee next if i say where is coffee bean coming in the thyroid which is that favorite thyroid cancer of everyone i won't even wait for the answers i know you know it papillary carcinoma where else can you see it in some kind of a bone tumor these are the ini ct questions any kind of a bone tumor this used to be once upon a time a gipmer exam favorite question this bone tumor and what is it that bone tumor is a chondro chondroblastoma chondroblastoma right bone tumor pucha tha but meanwhile bony lesion may follow you are saying langer hand cell histiocytosis i agree with you that also shows you a coffee bean appearance so these are the final coffee beans and INI loves coffee so this is definitely something you could expect out of it so this question is also done shall we move forward to another very famous PYQ i've got you a mixed bag because i couldn't fit them into one one chapter they could come from anywhere pop up randomly right so tell me this which of the following are pathognomic for melacoplakia simple question has been asked so many times michaelis gutman bodies but now you will tell me image based question aaya to how is it gonna come so i read someone in between talking uh, dr zen was saying that um, consistency anxiety panic so obviously last uh, you know when you're in your last run towards the exam if these things are happening it is a good sign in a way if you're over confident and you feel you've done way too much and you are beyond the others that is a bad sign if you're feeling under confident anxious panicky till the time you're able to study that much of anxiety and panic is okay but if it is so much that it is hampering your studies and your daily targets and schedule that is something you should not let that happen because you don't have control over certain things so stop thinking about it don't think about how the exam is going to go because it's only on that day that you'll get to know how the exam went you will not even get to know in the recall sessions after the exam how the exam went because the recall and the actual exam will also have a great discrepancy in the marks that is there so those are things you don't have a control over don't think about it think think about your daily target live in a very very day to day in a very very boxed manner tunnel vision today what do i have to do half day what do i have to do and that's about it coming back what is this this is going to be melacoplakia so now what are the questions that i'm expecting for melacoplakia it's usually seen in the urinary bladder but can be seen in prostate and other organs also now problem is that melacoplakia looks like these yellow yellow plaques yellow mucosal plaques so when a, a you know a clinician is looking at a cystoscopy image he sees mucosal plaques and he puts up a query to me that is this a urinary bladder carcinoma because he feels this is a cancerous etiology but when i look at these things under the microscope all that i see are these blue blue color bodies of calcium like this this one is almost looking like a samoma body don't you feel it's looking like something to do with calcium and those calcium bodies are made up of nothing made up of calcium those are michaelis gutman bodies so remember m for melacoplakia m for michaelis gutman bodies made up of calcium what is it actually because of very very good this is going to be a phagocytic disorder it is a phagolysosome defect it is a phagolysosome defect so imagine urine urinary bladder which bacteria is most likely to come most common cause of uti e coli 
If E. coli has come, you should suppose you should ideally be killing it. These people can't kill it. Why? Because their phagolysosome is not working well. Phagocytosis is not working well. How will they kill the E. coli? So that poor E. coli is now going to be trapped. That poor E. coli will be trapped in these calcium spots. And that is what is melacoplakia. Very, very good. But this pura cell kya hai? Calcium I have understood. But what are these cells? These cells are known as the von Hansmann cells. And this is what is the scientist. So I don't have any logic behind it. Scientist Q per naam hai. You will unfortunately have to mug it up. So yes, coming back to the question. Melacoplakia is going to show you. Michaelis Gutman, I don't think I need to ask you the others because that is too primitive a question. Asbestos bodies are going to be seen of course in asbestosis. Ash of bodies are seen in rheumatic heart disease. Of course we know that. And Samoma bodies also we have discussed. It is seen in PSM square. We've done this many many times. So this is sorted. Yeah so Dr. Khushbu has recalled the Jomo that I had told all of you and I will tell you this once again at the end because today is probably the last session that we are having before I and I in such depth, of course, we will meet for short durations, but I will tell you the Jomo philosophy once again. Okay, coming to the next one. Okay, move on. There's an 18 year old man presents with a 3 centimeter well defined lucent lesion within the epiphysis of the distal femur. Bone tumors may, the location is most important. Microscopic features and surgical curatages are represented by HNE images. I feel I think the HNE images are somewhere missing. I think they've been shifted by the formatting. Let me give you a test, one more test. Can you diagnose this even without the HNE images so that I can actually help you uh, answer it without photos? Sometimes photos are a formality. So, socho, ma'am, I have to think of something to do with epiphysis. Ab epiphysis mein kya kya aata hai? Epiphysis mein we have, so I hope you all remember that epiphysis mein there is giant cell tumor. Epiphysis is giant cell tumor. It is not chondrosarcoma, but a variant of chondrosarcoma called clear cell chondrosarcoma. And the other one is going to be chondroblastoma. The other one is going to be chondroblastoma yes many people learn it as ecg you can learn it as ecg but i feel that mnemonic is a little incomplete so i have learned epiphysis as gct only why because gct to aega hi aega and after that the two c's you will take separately clear cell chondrosarcoma and chondroblastoma so this entire gct is going to be needed for epiphysis now if i show you the pictures this is i think what got transferred onto the other slide unfortunately but yeah it couldn't fit over here so these are the pictures that they were trying to show you over here and that is what you are seeing three things can you start labeling it for me so that i know and like i told you this is something which is used to be gypmer favorite and i and i may favorite ho jayega automatically it's very very important point number one what are you seeing multinucleated giant cells you're seeing multinucleated giant cells next are you seeing that coffee bean i just now told you there are lines going to go inside the nuclei you can see that over here the nuclei is showing you grooves over here as well coffee bean appearance is noted very good and the last one and this question used to come a lot blue blue color fibers like a chicken wire chicken wire calcification chicken wire calcification exactly dr zainab 18 year pe gct ho sakta tha ho sakta tha yes possibility but that is what i wanted you to give me possibilities i did not say that make the answer on the basis of this you could have given me a possibility of gct you could have given me a possibility of say chondroblastoma on the basis of epiphysis who makes the final answer the final answer comes on what is the picture given to you and yaha par bhi confusion hoga because gct also shows you giant cells and chondroblastoma Blastoma also shows you giant cells. That is why the examiner loves to give you this question. So what will help you differentiate? Chondroblastoma will have coffee bean and chondroblastoma will have the, the chicken wire calcification. So that is why final answer is always like I am giving myself way too much of importance. But cancers may I am genuinely very important. Cancers may the final final diagnosis is always made on what the pathology slide is given to you in the exam. That is, that is why we say na, cancers ka gold standard is histopath biopsy so of course you could have had possibilities but now your final answer after this is going to be chondroblastoma meanwhile many of you have started making a lot of nice emoticons with chicken in it so that gives me one hint that you are wanting to revise all the different chicken wires that you have you have four chicken wires should we make like one collage a collage picture bana lete so that all the chicken wires and again these are some things like coffee beans INICET will not ask you what all coffee beans but somewhere will fit in one coffee. 
same way somewhere they will fit in one chicken wire in some question or the other so these are the chicken wires that we have first listen what chicken wire sirf chicken wire nahi dekhna you don't have to see only chicken wire in the paper what chicken wire chicken wire blood vessels pucha hai so there are two things have they asked chicken wire calcification or chicken wire fibrosis but chicken wire everyone understands jo chicken uh, fence ke liye in a farm the fence is used that thin wire that is a chicken wire so firstly chicken wire blood vessels you will ask me what is the site as soon as i say okay look at these blood vessels chicken wire blood vessels they are in the brain i've got a perfect answer for all of you very good oligodendroglioma oligodendroglioma was fried egg appearance na to egg is also there chicken is also there sorted if i say that no chicken wire blood vessels this entangled mass is seen on fnc of breast what is your answer guys what is your answer for chicken wire blood vessels on fnc breast this is something for ini cet that i would want you to know mucinous or colloid carcinoma breast mucinous or colloid carcinoma breast and again not many people study this in so much of depth but i and i ke liye one or two extra points so you will have to do so this is going to be mucinous what happens the name is only telling me ma'am it has so much of mucin mucin jelly mucin all these poor blood vessels are getting entangled kitna zyada gel hai we are getting like head like headphones ka wire gets entangled same way the blood vessels also get entangled that is what you have for mucinous colloid carcinoma breast now chicken wire calcification you don't have to do ratta i just told you chondroblastoma shows you chicken wire calcification sorted chicken wire fibrosis and now two things pehle to chicken wire fibrosis is seen in which disease alcohol people who consume a lot of alcohol usually have a favorite food item with alcohol and that is chicken to so chicken wire fibrosis kis ke sath hoga chicken wire fibrosis i've learnt it as chicken is a food item with what chicken is a food item very famously consumed with alcohol to so alcohol or chicken ko sath mein rakhna right but now tell me that when i'm seeing chicken wire fibrosis why is this looking blue why is this how do i what is the stain for fibrous tissue kuch batao which is very very famous stain for fibrous tissue another added page that we are going to have fibrous or collagen what is that stain yes i think general path we have to take side by side now mason what what should i write mason fontana i should write or mason trichrome i should write fontana would have been tanning of the skin fontana would have been melanin i can't write fontana over here i will write very good i would write mason trichrome so no i am not writing mason fontana because tanning of the skin would have meant melanin i am writing mason trichrome trichrome is simple it's going to be a three color situation tri color so i am not interested in the nucleus nucleus is going to come something blue black honestly ye bhool jao this color i am not interested in i am interested in what will be coming blue and what will be coming red so remember muscle is red mister muscle is going to be muscle is going to be red and collagen is going to be blue so now you understand collagen is going to be blue the fibrous tissue is going to be blue come back the collagen the fibrous tissue that has come out to be blue so now the purpose of me telling you this was any collagen question comes anywhere in pathology collagen scar wound healing ya fir myocardial infarction hua then a person has a scar formation any scar related question comes and they will be ready with this mason trichrome question in front of you ठीक है सॉर्टेड एवरीवन मिस्टर याद कर लो लर्न द कलर ऑफ एनी वन मसल इज रेड सो ऑटोमेटिकली कोलाजन बिकम्स ब्लू दिस इज आल्सो डन कैन वी मूव ऑन टू अनदर आई एन आई फेवरेट क्वेश्चन मूविंग ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट वन हियर यू हैव अ थ्री इयर ओल्ड विद अ यंग अ वेरी यंग किड विद अ वजाइनल मास दैट वजाइनल मास हैज बीन शोन बिलो biopsy and histopath assessment from the same has been shown so okay biopsy picture pathology also given which of the following immunohistochemical markers will you use they have given you panels you need to tell me panels dr prem prakash is saying ma'am padhne ka ekdam man nahi karta i can totally understand see your saturation has already come with neat pg and i don't blame you guys because you studied so much 
and not only have you studied so much you guys have been made to study so much because there is so much happening around you you don't have one you, you just don't have my rapid revision to listen to first you have 19 subjects then you have 19 subjects from 1 million platforms to listen to the saturation to hoga so now my advice to you is that again you have to kill that FOMO factor and you have to get down to reading only what you want to read or you feel is important from PYQ point of view. You have to start missing out on things, right? The things that are too many things going around you, sab kuch nahi par sakte. In 10, 12, 15 days, you can't study everything. You have to firstly get a little motivated that, okay, it's the last 10, 12 days that I have to study. That factor has to come in your mind. After that, you have to limit yourself only to PYQ, PYQ, PYQ. That's about it. Okay, so now, uh, yes, um, exam jaldi ho, bhool jaoge, nahi bhoologe, kitni baar, so many times, sometimes I also feel that what should I teach you now, I have taught you everything in RR, I have taught you everything on YouTube, I feel what new can I teach them, but I don't want to teach you so many new things that you feel that unnecessarily I am burdening you with information, so abhi bas aisa hai that it's like, it's gone at a mechanical level, that haan, we know, Mason Fontana, this is one millionth time ma'am is telling us Mason Fontana, Mason Trichrome, bas sunte jao, when you've shown so much of patience and so much of dedication, you don't want to ruin it for the last 15 days. You worked, and trust me, you listen from all the students who've cracked the exam, they tell you that the last 15, 20 days are the most crucial. A person who puts his 100% in this time is definitely going to crack the exam. So now you don't have to lose hope and miss out on all the effort that you've put in earlier. Now is the time to make the benefit out of it. Ab to yaad hua hai. Ab finally yaad hua hai. Now is the time to solve questions, get them right, utilize that knowledge. And now if you break down, then it's like a total waste of all the effort that you've put in. You're not going to do that. You're much stronger than that. You've gone through so many things, postponements, preponements, so many other miscellaneous ups and downs have happened and you've gone through everything. So now just last 15 days of boredom, I'm sure you guys can conquer. That is a very small deal for all of you. Coming back, meanwhile, I saw that answers were coming and very, very good answers were coming, right? That is the first one and everyone said embryonal rhabdomyosarcoma yes this is a case of embryonal rhabdomyosarcoma ini ka favorite embryonal tumor so everything about it let's make a flashcard and then i'll come back to the other options also okay so first and foremost what is embryonal rhabdomyosarcoma also known as sarcoma botryoids why botryoids botryoids ka matlab hota hai bunch of grapes botryoid means bunch of grapes so the tumor is looking exactly like a bunch of grapes that is the most classical thing that you will find in the tumor. Yaha pe diagnosis banta hai. Now you look at this rhabdomyosarcoma. Guys, what is rhabdomyo? Rhabdomyo is skeletal muscle. It is a skeletal muscle cancer. I will see all the cells are like clustered over here. Like all of you are only sitting over here. You are not doing any cell study. Abhi baki sab books are all khali. You are only studying one thing that is pathology. Right? So this is what that all concentration of cells over here is known as the cambium layer. All this concentrated is known as the cambium layer. Previous year question for AIMS. Cambium layer is a feature of what? It is a feature of embryonal RMS. But how do the cells look like? The cells are looking very khichawa. They are looking like this. They are looking long cells. As if someone has pulled them apart. Tennis racket, strap. These are the words used for it. They are looking like tennis racket or strap cells. So firstly, bunch of grapes, tennis rackets, Cambium layer. Ye tino words use hua. They are talking about embryonal. Here they give you bunch of grapes. They give you cambium layer. Embryonal rhabdomyosarcoma was done. Now let's come to IHC markers. Before I go into this question, tell me the basics. Utmost basics of immunohistochemistry. If cytokeratin comes positive, kya sochoge? Ma'am, I will think of C for C. Cytokeratin comes positive, carcinoma. If LCA comes positive, I will think of L for L and that is some kind of a lymphoma, Hodgkin's, non-Hodgkin's, kuch lymphoma hoga. If HMB45 comes positive, M for M, I am going to think of melanoma. So till here it was so simple, na? C for C, cytokeratin for carcinoma, L for L, LCA for lymphoma, M for M, HMB45 for melanoma. So, bacha kya vimentin? Vimentin positivity is going to be for sarcoma. So, here I was talking about rhabdomyosarcoma. So, vimentin to has to be positive. What beyond that? What beyond that? So, everyone listen to me. When you're talking about any kind of a sarcoma, that could be leomyosarcoma, 
rhabdomyosarcoma leomyo means smooth muscle wala sarcoma and rhabdomyo means skeletal muscle sarcoma as long as it is a sarcoma both of them will be vimentin positive sarcoma has to be vimentin positive koi bhi sarcoma osteosarcoma liposarcoma fibrosarcoma chondrosarcoma anyway they write sarcoma you copy paste vimentin but how do i know it's smooth muscle because smooth muscle actin will be positive smooth muscle actin will be positive then i'll say leomyosarcoma but if desmin this is a question that came in your previous year inict if desmin is positive or if myo d1 is positive then we are going to think in terms of skeletal muscle tumor and now go back to your question and ask yourself वाइमेंटिन पहले तो वाइमेंटिन ढूंढो आई हैव फाउंड द वाइमेंटिन बट इट कैन बी स्मूथ मसल इट्स नॉट लियोमायोसार्कोमा इट्स रैब्डोमायोसार्कोमा सो योर आंसर इज गोइंग टू बी द फर्स्ट ऑप्शन व्हाट आर द अदर ऑप्शंस गिवन साइटोकेरेटिन एंड डेजमिन दिस इज अजो मिसमैच ना साइटोकेरेटिन वाज कार्सिनोमा एंड डेजमिन इज स्केलेटल मसल टोटल मिसमैच नॉट मैचिंग एट ऑल सीडी 99 आई दिस ऑप्शन वाज एक्चुअली क्वेश्चन के लिए दिस ऑप्शन इज टोटली रॉन्ग Why have I put this option? Only because I wanted to discuss CD ninety nine. CD ninety nine is an INI CET favorite topic, and you're gonna make just two tumors with CD ninety nine that you are gonna tell me. So, देखो या तो सिर्फ सिर्फ CD ninety nine they will write only CD ninety nine, and which ovarian tumor will come to your mind? The ovarian tumor that occurs in very very old women, ninety nine year old post menopausal women, granulosa, granny wala tumor, granny wala tumor, granulosa cell tumor that is CD. 99 positive. If CD 99 in the exam they say no. Now we want to call it by a pet name. Uska ek pet name rakh diya. Mick two. And now that tumor is going to be Ewing's sarcoma. So please remember Ewing's. Can you tell me from orthopedics Ewing sarcoma ka age kya hai? It is not elderly people. Ewing sarcoma usually occurs in adolescent males, a little on the younger side. तो मिट्ठू मिट्ठू इज हाउ आई लर्न इट मिट्ठू इज पेट नेम छोटे बच्चों का पेट नेम तो दिस अडोलिसेंट लिटिल यंगर पॉपुलेशन के लिए आई हैव केप्ट सी डी नाइनटी नाइन ऑल्सो नोन एज मिक टू और मिट्ठू एंड वेन ओनली सी डी नाइनटी नाइन विल बी रिटर्न दैट इज अ नाइनटी नाइन ईयर ओल्ड ग्रैनी एंड दैट इज ग्रैन्यूलोसा सेल ट्यूमर राइट ओके सो डॉक्टर सिद्धार्थ एवरी वन आई थिंक नोज द ग्रैनी एंड हर एक्स निमोनिक नाउ यूर जस्ट गेटिंग थ्रिल्स आउट ऑफ लिसनिंग टू दैट स्टोरी अगेन एंड अगेन but if you guys know it then this today's class is not where we are going to repeat it and for those who don't know it please go to the neat pg marathon you will have a good laugh over it it's a good time pass story that you will find okay so coming back chalo ye wala question ho gaya but now i want to add on to a question okay someone asked me what is the evings ka translocation very simple translocation jaldi se bata do so too many pages being added today for extra questions which is so good evings sarcoma ka translocation is very simple you will take the e for 11 and you will take the s ka opposite that is 2 22 translocation 11 22 is evings sarcoma and if you ask me the fusion it is ews fly 1 fusion how do i learn this what are the genes getting fused ews for evings sarcoma ews and wings help you fly e wings wings help you fly to e w s fly one fusion theek hai ab now that you've told me and asked me so many things to ab ye bhi bata do what is the special stain for e wings sarcoma e wings sarcoma is that tumor which has glycogen the only bone tumor to have glycogen and anything that has glycogen will be the pretty pink pass positive pretty pink pass पॉजिटिव सब कुछ हो गया चलो इविंग इज ऑल्सो डन अभी कमिंग बैक वॉय वेयर वॉज आई आई वॉज ऑन एम्ब्रियनल रैबडोमायोसारकोमा लेट मी फिनिश दैट बिकॉज इन स्टेड ऑफ आस्किंग यू ऑल दीज आई एच सी मार्कर्स इफ इन दी एग्जाम दे एंड ऑफ आस्किंग यू एनी स्पेशल स्टेन टेल मी वन स्पेशल स्टेन फॉर स्केलेटल मसल दैट इज अ टिपिकल मतलब यू नो दो ओल्ड एज स्टेन विच हार्डली आर बींग यूज नाउ बट एम्स एग्जाम आई एन आई लव दो इज पी टी ए एच वेरी गुड वॉट इज पी टी ए एच यू डो वॉन्ट नो द फुल फॉर्म एक बार बस सुन लो फॉस्को टंगस्टिक एसिड हीमाटोक्सिलिन इट्स अ टाइप ऑफ अ हीमाटोक्सिलिन फॉस्को टंगस्टिक एसिड हीमाटोक्सिलिन हाउ विल यू लर्न इट स्केलेटल मसल स्केलेटल मसल इज स्ट्रेंथ पिटाई करने के लिए इफ यू हैव टू हिट सम वन यू नीड अलॉट ऑफ स्केलेटल मसल पिटाई के लिए पिटाई स्टेन पी टी ए एच साउंड लाइक पिटाई तो पी टी ए एच इज गोइंग टू बी फॉर द पिटाई वाला मसल दैट इज स्केलेटल मसल एवरी थिंग अबाउट दिस इज डन फाइनली डन एंड नाउ वी कैन मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट वन अगेन अ टिपिकल आई एन आई लव टेकिंग यू इन साइड अ लेबोरेटरी वॉट इज हैपनिंग इन द लैब 
that achha, one more question dr prem is asking is this ptah also for brain yeah it can also be for neural correct it is also for neural brain also but most questions come on skeletal muscle only right theek hai chalo now taking you inside the lab arrange the following steps in the correct order of what you never read histopathology processing एक स्लाइड पढ़ना है एंड वी ऑलवेज मिस इट सो प्लीज डोंट एंड फिनिश इट ऑफ टुडे व्हाट इज दिस गाइस यू हैव गॉट फोर थिंग्स रिटन इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू फिक्सेशन क्लियरिंग माउंटिंग एंड डिहाइड्रेशन यू आर गोना टेल मी हाउ द करेक्ट ऑर्डर गोज ओके सो देयर इज अ वेरी इजी निमोनिक अगेन दिस तो इज अ वेरी लॉन्ग लिस्ट यू नीड अ निमोनिक अदरवाइज इट्स नेवर गोना बी राइट आई स्टार्टेड गेटिंग अ फ्यू आंसर्स ऑफ ए बी सी मिक्सचर तो गिव मी सम टाइम Let me actually teach you first, and I will ask you the question once again. So, first, the mnemonic. What will happen, ma'am? The first step of everything is always fixation. First step has to be fixation. So, what I'll do? I have learned that you have to fix the concept in your brain. Fix the concept in your brain. So, fix it. Do put this tissue processing in your brain. So, imagine uh, you are an intern, and uh, your surgeon has told you that go and give this endometrial biopsy to the pathologist. so what is the first thing that you're going to put that endometrial biopsy into you will put it in 10% neutral buffered formalin if it has to go for light microscopy usually it has to go for light microscopy only so the first thing you do is fix kar do you put it in a fixative fix the you've come and given it to me what will i do i will put it in these machines ye kaun sa machines hain these are the histopath machines the histopathology processors after this whatever i'm going to tell you i'm going to sit back and relax because this machine is going to do all the work what will this machine do after you've given it in a fixative fix the the for d that is dehydration dehydration is what take out all the water take out all the water from the tissue what takes out water alcohol and acetone take out water so i will use al alcohol or acetone they are always dehydrating things so fix for fixation the for dehydration concept concept c se kya hai clearing you will say ma'am clear the tissue sara kuch tissue mein se clear karo so clear sounds like clean you want to clean the tissue to clean the tissue you need xylene try to make it rhyming to clean the tissue you need xylene to kya ho gaya fixation dehydration clean clearing xylene fix the concept in in for impregnation impregnation what impregnate what is the meaning of impregnating putting something into it till now you were taking things out of it take out all the water clean it you were removing things from the tissue now you are adding something to the tissue impregnation means you will put wax paraffin wax you will put impregnating put the concept in where in your brain b bedding and blocking the last step that you do is bedding and blocking and this is going to give you your paraffin block this is ready everyone please learn it till here because this is primarily what they will ask you in the paper fix the concept in your brain fixation dehydration clearing impregnation bedding and blocking block is ready this is a paraffin block and yahan par hai hamara endometrial biopsy kya kare ma'am i am not interested in all this in the practical exam they give me one glass slide i am just interested in that glass slide so okay put it onto a glass slide cut it and put it onto a glass slide so now you're going to cut it after cutting it you're going to add that pink and blue pink and blue matlab apna staining karo but once you've done the staining now imagine you've added your pink and blue and colors are you just going to come and give me the slide like this ke ma'am dekho slide dekh lo that tissue will dry off after so much of exposure to the environment you will have to cover it with something and that step is known as mounting mounting matlab you are putting something on top of it you are putting a cover slip on top of it ini cet can ask you this question if this is a slide and you want to put something else on top of it stick kaise karoge you how will you stick it so for example if this is a slide i want to put a cover slip how do we stick it we have something called dpx you don't want to know the full form of dpx diesterine polystyrene xylenol lamba sa naam hai not useful please don't learn it so dpx is what you're going to use to stick it so ye sab to baad ke steps hain jo main step hai that is fix the concept in your brain so let me come back to the question as soon as this question comes in the paper i will say fix the concept in your brain fixation dehydration clearing impregnation bedding and blocking after that cut stain and mount theek hai so let me start fixation of course will come first dehydration not given in the question clearing is definitely 
uh, given in the question yes after that what oh sorry dehydration was given in the question so that becomes the second one third one becomes clearing and last one becomes mounting so that is going to be your order that you follow over here is that okay with everyone yes one three four two correct which i think was not there in the options that is why you guys were having a, a one two three one okay so we'll just put it in this order that is better this is the order that you have to follow so you will mark the answer on the basis of that pdf ka tension mat lo pdf i put on my telegram group pdf is the last thing you have to worry about when you are studying with me so please don't worry so it becomes yeah it becomes one four two three that means option number c okay okay so this is also done i'm happy but just before i end it you just told me the fixative for light microscope can you please tell me the fixative for electron microscope also light microscope ka 10% neutral buffered formalin everyone is there and electron microscope ka yes electron microscope 2 to 2.5% of what perfect glutaraldehyde glutaraldehyde 2 to 2.5% for electron microscope these are questions of path and micro both okay let's move on to the next i've got two very famous previous year questions which are again a combination of path and micro they have been asked two two times in the aims exam so pehla wala question is in front of you jaldi se you will answer these because you know their answers you've seen them you've attempted them there's a 43 year old factory worker presenting with complaints of abdominal pain diarrhea weight loss hemoglobin is 9 mcv is 88 small intestinal biopsy is given this is the picture on which your diagnosis is based what is it what is the answer over here b very good grda cis yes this is a case of grda lamblia how did you identify grda lamblia because micro mein aisa photo nahi dikhta micro mein the kind of photo that you see is that angry old man angry old man that you have so old man you call him dada ji that is what we call grda if you have gone through the main videos and rapid revision on the prep ladder app you know i have called him dada ji why because dada ji for duodenum this old man this dada ji always goes in the duodenum so where in the duodenum so this is how it looks like like a man with a beard but that is how it looks like in microbiology microbio ka books mein matlab stool sample mein this is how it looks like pathology books mein it looks a little different it says new book new shape so when i was in micro books i was looking like an angry old man come to a new subject so new shape so when it was looking like an angry old man it was looking like this front view when it comes in pathology it says thoda angle banate hain right and that angle is going to give it a sickle shape the angle tends to give it a sickle shape simple that is one thing so pathology may remember giardia lamblia will come across as sickle and which part of the intestine is it in it's a luminal organism that is very characteristic giardia lamblia is going to be a luminal organism quickly tell me the motility which i think everyone knows giardia lamblia is girta hua leaf girta hua leaf means falling leaf motility is going to be noted so simple micro books mate might look like this the angry man but pathology books thoda sa fashion kara usne side angle se photo khichaya so that it becomes a sickle shape so this is what you have a luminal organism classical giardia yes giardia causes abdominal pain diarrhea and weight loss we already know about it so intestine involvement hoga that is of course going to happen one more previous year question classical question that has been asked two times in the aims exam hiv positive person with intractable diarrhea undergoes a gi biopsy on high power cluster of small dot like structures are seen along the brush border and you say this and i don't want to listen to anything else in the question nothing more i want to read after this so what is the brush border wala has to be cryptosporidium so how it came in the previous year papers was they gave you this picture exactly ye wala same photo was given in the paper how did i know it is the intestine what are these cells that you see in the intestine which you don't see many places elsewhere these are of course the goblet cells i see the goblet cells i know this is intestine and i can see in the intestine how these chota chota dots are sticking over here they are sticking if this is the brush border it's sticking over here it's not going inside look here also these are sticking so whenever they say something is going to be along the brush border that is how you identify 
cryptosporidium can you tell me the drug of choice for cryptosporidium because if i have to actually correlate that with microbiology that is going to help me a lot cryptosporidium ka drug of choice if you remember our mnemonic which we did in the last to last session to pakka pata hai you will never ever forget remember i'll give you a hint something to do with cryptocurrency who had a lot of cryptocurrency yes ma'am we had studied cryptocurrency with neeta ambani so neeta zoxanide neeta zoxanide the cryptocurrency lots of money and you will never forget this story so these two organisms very very important okay one or two more questions left quickly we'll settle it question number 1 we have what is to do with this something to do with surgery perfect please answer 60 year old man presents with signs and symptoms of liver failure long history of abdominal pain and intermittent jaundice is going to be there he is found to have cirrhosis and ultimately undergoes a liver transplantation what is the histopathological examination that is also showing you in okay so now i think the rest of the question today there's been a slight formatting issue that is there you just need to tell me which of these is a false statement i think that will make it easier tell me which of these is going to be the false statement yes so false one you guys have already started answering i don't know how but false wala statement is what you had to tell me so c is what everyone is telling me that oh it is you think it can never be associated with ulcerative colitis that is what you feel over here but that is not the case what am i talking about diagnosis kya banaya let me come down to the diagnosis and then you will tell me what is the false statement over here everyone is saying c let's see what is the thought process out here what is the diagnosis this is okay d also started coming correct if i go into this i will realize that this is going to be a case of onion skin fibrosis have a look at this picture look at this this is a bile duct this is a bile duct and bile duct ke aas pass gol 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 there is onion skinning so we call it onion skin fibrosis onion skin fibrosis also this is a case of primary sclerosing cholangitis so radiologically primary sclerosing cholangitis shows you what it shows you a lot of strictures in the bile duct there are a lot of bile duct strictures that you are going to see that has been given many many names remember they say strings uh, or beads in a string appearance that is what you must have studied or pruning of the bile ducts exactly there is pruning that is seen there is a uh, strings or beads on a string appearance that is seen exactly these are the different radiological images that are seen so what did i write radiological investigation shows a normal biliary tract not at all it shows you strictures pruning the string beads appearance so this is the false statement that you have over here correct the false statement mil gaya this means all the others could possibly be true no because i did not tell you it was going to be a single choice answer it could have had multiple options this was just something that i had got for confusing you a little and wo confusion thoda ho hi gaya that i basically was successful in doing that so what i'll do i'll teach you primary sclerosing cholangitis and then you will tell me all the false statements over here meanwhile many of you have started telling me ki ye wala is also false correct dekho there are two things that is primary biliary cholangitis and primary sclerosing cholangitis i will write it as pbc and psc from today onwards so now please note if i talk in terms of antibodies primary biliary cholangitis is anti mitochondrial antibodies and primary sclerosing cholangitis is p anchor which is in males which is in females amma is sounding anti mitochondrial is sounding like amma so amma wala must be more common in females and p anchor is sounding like papa so of course this must be more common in males male female equal ho gaya matlab samajh aa gaya and you understood antibodies also so primary sclerosing cholangitis is p anchor which intestinal disorder is also p anchor guys you just told me ulcerative colitis is also going to be p anchor so is psc and ulcerative colitis very commonly going to coexist in people yes it is what else then what is primary biliary cholangitis associated with it has only come once as a question go through it and that is jogren syndrome pbc has been associated with jogren syndrome coming to the radiology pbc may radiology normal hota hai psc is not going to be sclerosing strictures hoga so radio is also going to be abnormal and pathology is also going to be abnormal and right now you have studied both radiology mein kya abnormal hai you are going to get a lot of strictures you are going to get a lot of pruning of the bile ducts and pathology mein kya abnormal hai you are going to get the onion skin appearance so this is quite different in terms of radio and patho both pbc ka radiology is normal and patho is also not very significant but finally 
कोलेंजाइटिस कोलेंजाइटिस मतलब बाइल डक्ट का इन्वॉल्वमेंट कौन सा वाला बाइल डक्ट इंट्रा हेपैटिक एक्स्ट्रा हेपैटिक विच मेनी ऑफ यू हैड टोल्ड मी सो प्लीज रिमेंबर बिलियरी गेट्स ओनली आईज इन इट सो दिस इज इंट्रा हिपैटिक बाइल डक्ट वेर एज स्क्लेरोजिंग हैज ई एंड आई इन इट सो इट इज इंट्रा हिपैटिक एंड एक्स्ट्रा हिपैटिक बाइल डक्ट देर इज Unfortunately, no other way of learning it. Repeating, biliary has only eyes, intrahepatic. Sclerosing has e as well as i, so intra and extrahepatic. Now let's revisit the question and have a look at it one last time. You have to tell me a true false. If this is a case of primary sclerosing cholangitis from the onion skin that I've made, is it more commonly seen in males? Yes, because it is p anka associated. P anka matlab papa most commonly in males. Is it going to show you anti mitochondrial antibodies? No, P anka dikta hai. Anti mitochondrial was for PBC, so this was false. Can be associated with ulcerative colitis? Yes, P anka is associated with ulcerative colitis. Will radiology be normal? Again, false. So what were the false statements that you had over here? Were B and D. This was about reading the question carefully, which many of you did eventually. So great going. So this is done. Another question which is going to come up very fam famous. Pehle attempt without an image, then I'll come to it. Which of the following disease is associated with the storage of a non-functional protein in the hepatocytes? Another liver-related question coming up your way. Another liver-related question. So, if they say protein and they say that it is accumulating in the hepatocytes, there is only one thing from protein coming to my mind and that is alpha-1 antitrypsin. Yes, unanimous answer. Everyone's right. Because baki sab mein see, Wilson's mein it would have been something to do with copper. Cholesterolemia is an altogether different game. Tay-Sachs disease becomes what? It's going to be the lysosomal storage disorder. So, that also is about lysosomes and lipids. Totally different. Protein pucha, storage pucha. It has to be alpha-1 antitrypsin. So, now you're going to tell me bullet, 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 bullet. 1, 2, 3, 4. Karke answer karo and khatam karo. So, when I'm asking you questions about alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, first tell me alpha-1 antitrypsin is a gene which is present on chromosome number this very good. I've already got the answer. It is present on chromosome number 14. Next question. I'm going to tell you all bullets. Next question. When I write someone is genotype. Someone you say ma'am this is a person. His name is John. John has genotype PIMM. Matlab John is normal. PIMM means we have adequate amount of alpha 1 antitrypsin. Sab kuch theek hai. Everything is normal. Whereas if you say that John is PIZZ, I'll say ZZ means that John has the disease. John is going to have a disease. So there's a ZZ. And if you say that John is PIMZ, little bit normal, little bit disease, I will say he is going to be a carrier state. Theek hai? So MM for normal, ZZ for disease and MZ is going to be for carrier. Khatam. Theek hai. Next I ask you, is it only going to affect the liver? No, all of you were right. Ma'am, it affects LNL. It is going to affect the lungs also. In the lungs, what does it cause guys? It causes pan-ACNR, emphysema, which many of you have already told me. And in the liver, what does it cause? Chota bachcha hoga and it will cause, yes, cirrhosis. Chota bachcha cirrhosis. Why am I saying chota bachcha? Because alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency is an autosomal recessive disorder and recessive disorders usually tend to begin in childhood. Yes, this is sorted. Ab ye sab answer kar diya. All this you have already answered for me. So, I'll put a tick mark on all of this that we had to study. You are just now going to tell me the final diagnosis with the help of a slide. Yes, so what is this slide going to show you? Pink, pink color stain hai, matlab it is past. So how do you do the diagnosis of alpha-1 antitrypsin other than genetics? Pathology mein kaise karoge? So alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency shows you past positive diastase resistant globules. All these pink, pink colors, past positive diastase resistant. Because guys, what is past positive diastase sensitive? Kya cheez hoti hai? Past positive diastase sensitive, that is only glycogen. Only glycogen on this planet, Earth, is diastase sensitive. Rest everything else on planet Earth is going to be diastase resistant. So, alpha-1 antitrypsin poocha, ya basement membrane poocha, ya colloid poocha, with anything if they write past positive, na, and they say, what is it, diastase sensitive or resistant? You say it is resistant. Only when they say glycogen, you will say, okay, hang on. 
that is past positive dietary sensitive so sometime back someone just asked me a question on ewing sarcoma remember we added one slide and that student had asked me ke ma'am ewing sarcoma has glycogen hai na to glycogen will be what ewing sarcoma is what past positive dietary sensitive but alpha 1 antitrypsin is past positive dietary resistant so this question is also settled for all of you easy guys this also marks almost last question that i'm going on to and then we can wrap up today's session here you go little bit of another surgery path correlation which of the following her two new immunohistochemical studies will be further evaluated using fish you have four options that is a b c d and in front of them 0 1 plus 2 plus and 3 plus is written which out of these these are all immunohistochemistry anyway i know because sab mein aisa brown brown color is coming so brown brown means immunohistochemistry but all of you are right the 2 plus 1 means this one i am doubtful about i will have to use fish so what is the protocol chalo let's reattempt it what is the protocol first for any breast cancer biopsy you do her to new immunohistochemistry why am i doing this i want to know is her to new amplified so in you know one thing is i do genetic genetics mein time lagega money economical constraint so i do a little bit of a uh, you know technically a more easier thing i do immunohistochemistry i want to find out is her new amplified why because if her new is amplified what is the drug that i can give to the patient i can give trastuzumab so let's find out if they say zero or yeah, one plus one plus matlab little little brown color has come zero and one plus we consider as negative there is no her new amplification you will not no amplification matlab you're not gonna give trastuzumab if such a strong color comes, 3 plus, you'll be like, pakka positive ma'am, pakka, don't wait, give the patient trastuzumab. But if you are stuck in 2 plus, you are confused. Is it negative? Is it positive? Should I give the patient trastuzumab or not? You are confused. You will say, let's confirm. This is the situation under which you will say, I need something advanced. I will have to do fish. So which is the one that you will be using fish for? This one, option C for the 2 plus variety, I will have to use fish. What do I see on fish? That's the last slide for the day. For fish, everyone identifies, na, this is a fish wala photo. Fish mein ek to hai, you can do ratta. What is ratta? Ratta means they say that your HER2 new copies upon step 17 should be more than 2.2. If this is the status that you have, matlab HER2 new amplification hai. How do I find out? So, Firstly, you don't have to learn the color coding. Deekho, examiner will give you color coding. What is this CEP17? CEP17 means chromosome number 17 because her two new gene is going to be present on chromosome 17. Tell me something, you and I, all normal people, how many chromosome 17s do we have? Of course, everything is in pairs, ma'am. Everything is in pairs, so two chromosome 17 hoga. Examiner ne kya color diya? Green color diya. Do I have two green color dots, which is a normal thing, two chromosome 17s, two green color dots. Yahan par two green dots, yahan par two green dots, yahan par two green dots. Ye to theek hai. This person doesn't have any trisomy, monosomy. 17, 17, pair mein hai, that is fine. So this is done. Now I have to look at the red color. Red color has been given to her to new. Now my common sense tells me that if there are two chromosomes, there should be two her to new. Do chromosome hai, do her to new hai, to do red colors, bilkul. That is a normal situation. Two chromosomes, two red colors, perfect. But over here, there are two chromosomes and the red colors are almost five. So now tell me the formula. What is her to new upon step 17? You'll say, ma'am, her to new ka signals are coming five. But the chromosomes are only 2, means the formula is coming out to be 2.5. Anything above 2.2 means her 2 new is amplified. Next, wala to I don't even want to count. I don't need any formula because the red color signals are so many. 10, 12 signals I'm seeing. It will become something like 10 divided by 2. Hai na? So this is to of course going to be much, much beyond 2.2. So remember, this is what you need to know. Her to new, if it is amplified, obviously the overall the overall value will be more than 2.2. So simple tha. Agar to IHC se ho jata, sorted. I don't need fish. But if IHC gives me a 2 plus, then I will have to go for fish. When do I consider fish to be positive? When her to new upon step 17 comes out to be more than 2.2. And yes, that happens to be also the last question that we have for the day. Coming back to this slide, which I've been telling you to 
focus most on because this is actually going to work wonders fingers crossed i hope it does but please please whatever we studied in these three days ye to padhna hai and along with that those neat pg marathon sessions which we had recently conducted a month ago which you had also learned with me that you have to see and you are settled after that right so yes as i was saying jomo we were discussing something called jomo as your exam gets closer you don't have to suffer from fomo if someone says that oh you've not studied this oh you've not studied that that teacher told me that student told me this is important and that is important smile over it that is known as the joy of missing out the joy of missing out tells you that sometimes you should be happy that you are missing out on things you are making your life easier you are making your life simpler so try to start living with jomo rather than fomo and if you start practicing it and if you are accomplished in practicing it your life is going to be so much more simpler smoother and better happier also less anxiety less panic so last 15 days are for the joy of missing out okay yes okay so now um, everyone's uh, settled and uh, yes and as dr khushboo said it did help a lot a lot of students remain calm before the exam you have to start before the exam ignorance is bliss you start ignoring a lot of things and you realize that your productivity is going to increase trust me on that so thank you so much for joining in and i hope you have found these three days useful now that we are not going to meet before i and i we will of course meet at least if not for a class then for an all the best session of course because uh, that is something which i'm sure all of you would need a few days before the exam when the anxiety really really kicks in but till then give it your 200% you know what to study you have the resources in front of you but just stick to the resource that works for you you know from neat pg what is the resource that that worked for you so you don't really need to question yourself on that just stick to that keep reading that again and again and again till you actually become sick of it that is the limit you have to read everything to right so thank you so much for joining all the very best god bless you all and i'll be meeting you very soon for of course wishing you best of luck for the exam thank you